a lot of, uh, I guess, political experts are saying that uh, they won't risk rallying the markets because Lega has so much of its base that are entrepreneurs that are northern based that the last thing they want is the markets to be freaked out. Is that our premise? I think from a Salvini point of view is certainly one of the factors to consider. Um, certainly less of a factor for the five-star guys. Uh, so the compromise must be reached there. Um, but who holds power? Salvini uh, or Di Maio? Well, I, I think it's a 50-50 on, on this one. Salvini is clearly on the rise, but this is a, a coalition, it's not a coalition, it's an alliance between unnatural partners. Uh, they need to find a compromise. I think uh, they're not going to risk bringing down this government because of the budget. Um, they will uh, eventually reach a compromise on this. They will make lots of noise. Salvini is supposed to announce on Monday a new decree to deal with migration, so he can use that, you know, to, to distract the attention as well. So. Uh, Lost in place still here, but no major drama, no crisis of government anytime soon. Okay, what does it mean for yield spreads, Andrew? I have the Italian-German yield spread here. So it's widened a lot. I think you should have more risk premium in Italy, given the government we have, uh, a government that keeps talking about uh, leaving the euro. So, you know, casual talk uh, means something in terms of uh, risk premium. I think in the near term, um, it's perfectly plausible that Italy tightens a little bit, Italy widens a little bit. I don't have a strong view. I think the medium-term questions over debt dynamics are uh, difficult and not getting any easier. Well, Fango, we were just talking about French capitalism and the distinction of it with Mr. Chabron from Paris. What is Italian capitalism? <laughs> Italian capitalism. Well, well, if you look at what the Five Star and the Lega have been doing over the last 100 days or so they've been in government, we are talking about the bigger role of the state, which is certainly not a positive. Uh, the way in which they handle the, the, the collapse of the bridge and they attack the company running it even before any investigation was done. So is, uh, is, is, is some sort of old-fashioned statist approach, bigger role of the state, and some money that's supposed to come from the sky. Uh, clearly now with the budget, they're realizing that the money is not coming from the sky. And uh, all in all, I think is uh, this government from the business point of view doesn't really have much positive to offer. Um, Andrew, within this, is there an opportunity in Italy? I mean, we've sort of, you know, 842 opportunities since World War II to profit from Italy. It's always a struggle. What's the opportunity right now? So um, we've been underweight and that's, that's worked well this year. Uh, I think in the short term, uh, you know, as a trading matter, um, uh, we, we could see some volatility there. I just think the, the long-term issues are quite serious. Um, so as a long-term investment investor, you should be very careful on Italy. And you don't get that, you don't get paid that much. You can buy a US Treasury for a similar yield. Um, so I think as a long-term investor, uh, <coughs> potential growth is so close to zero. Um, uh, you know, the next recession is not going to be easy. So I think as a long-term investor, it makes sense to be quite cautious. Um, Andrew, do a lot of these periphery bonds actually move on the back of who replaces Mario Draghi, or is it going to be pretty much the same? I think it will be pretty much the same. I think that um, uh, QE is now something which seems not too controversial uh, internally. There was a point when there were claims that it was, you know, against the ECB's mandate or uncontroversial. But I think um, uh, across, you know, pretty much most members, uh, it's less controversial now as a tool. Uh, so I think going forward, it will be interesting to see who comes next. They're going to have a tough act to, um, to follow because the ECB president here is much a politician uh, as, a, as a central banker. Uh, but I think, I think the, the approach they have uh, using the capital key um, is, is something where the, the controversy over QE, which it took them years to actually start, far too late. But hopefully next time around, it wouldn't be the same, um, the same uh, theatre. Uh, Vofango, overall, does the next three or four years prove very difficult for the EU to stay together? So we still don't have a banking union, we don't have a capital markets union, but mm -hmm. we also have uh, Macron in France becoming l almost less popular by the minute. Yeah. You have Germany that still looks fragile. Are, are we going to test the kind of you know 2011 Greek crisis moments? Well, that will largely depend on, uh, on, on the markets. Politically, if you look at the next 12, 18 months, is a write-off between European election, changes of the European Commission, the Council, the ECB, uh, there is nothing happening. Is there appetite to do something significant in terms of reforms, in terms of going with the banking union? Zero appetite, regardless of Macron or not. Uh, so I think it's, it's a, some sort of muddle through. Um, the European Union is more and more focused on, on 
trying to strike trade deals abroad when they saw the U.S. retrenching on their front. Uh, but yes, they're not kind of uh, uh, creating some sort of buffer. They are not making the buffer bigger if something goes wrong outside the European Union and suddenly we are in trouble at the end of the day.